Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're seeing a resurgence of the mechanical keyboard. In other words, keyboards that have mechanical switches versus those uh, squishy membrane switches that we see on a lot of computers these days. And a lot of these mechanical keyboards have been directed to gamers, but Logitech has a new one out now that they're hoping will attract general typists as well. This is called the K840 and it uses Logitech's Romer G keyboard mechanism, and it uh, is very similar to many gaming keyboards that they make. However, it is uh, designed more for offices, so it has less of a gamer look to it, kind of a minimalist design, but it gets you that nice clicky keyboard sound here along with uh, really nice tactile feedback as you're typing. We're gonna take a closer look at this in just a second. I do wanna mention though, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. This keyboard costs about $79. So as uh, keyboards go for general computing, this is definitely on the premium side of things, but uh, the build quality is superb and the mechanical keys are really, really nice to type on. What I like about the Romer G mechanical mechanism that Logitech uses is that it's not overly sensitive and it's not overly springy. So you get a nice, uh, confident tactile feedback here without a lot of extra sensitivity that will throw you off while you're typing. So as I'm typing on this thing, I'm really uh, typing quite well on it. It's very easy to find the keys that I'm looking for. and I'm getting a nice amount of feedback back, just mechanical feedback uh, back to my fingers as I'm typing here. I am a touch typer. I actually learned how to type on uh, these old electronic uh, typewriters that had these really nice keyboards. And this one really reminds me a lot of that. And as such, I can really type pretty accurately with it, even though the keys look a little more narrow than you might be used to seeing on modern keyboards here. But they have a nice curve to them. So your fingers really do find their way. And there's an excellent amount of key travel here, as you can see, when you push down a key, it really uh, goes down quite a bit here. So you've got a nice amount of travel, nice amount of tactile feedback, a good amount of click too, and it's not too noisy either. So it really uh, checks all the boxes for me as a keyboard geek. Uh, the keyboard though is not backlit. Uh, there are some gaming keyboards from Logitech that don't look too ridiculous. They actually look fairly close to this one that costs about $10 more that do have backlighting. But uh, if you are looking for a basic keyboard and don't need the backlighting. This is probably uh, the least expensive mechanical keyboard Logitech makes uh, with a number pad on it. Uh, so that is how that works and overall pretty nice. There's no other USB port on here. It connects to your computer via USB, so you don't get a USB hub like you might see on some more expensive keyboards. Uh, there are some plastic stands here to prop the keyboard up a little bit to get the keys positioned better. I do prefer it in this uh, configuration versus having it lay flat on the desk. Uh, so you may want to enable that on there. So here is the software. This is called Logitech Options. It's not required to use the keyboard, but it does allow you to change what these first five function keys do. It's not as feature rich though as the software that comes on the gaming keyboard. So if you went up to that uh, $10 upcharge on the backlit gaming keyboard, you'll have a lot more functionality like macros and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is actually just key reassignments. So right now uh, F1 is set to my home. So if I go over to my two up view here and hold down uh, fun the FN key here and F1, I get my home page that I set up in Windows. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, F1 on its own without pushing the FN key will just be uh, pushing an F1 command out to the computer. I can turn this off if I want and then just have uh, the F1 key here uh, work as it did when I had to hold down two keys. Now what I can do though uh, is reconfigure how this thing works here. So for example, if I don't like the fact that it pulls up my home page when I hit that key, I can set the calculator to fire off when I do that. So now that we have that set, I can hit F1 here and pull up the calculator. Uh, likewise, I could go back in and decide I wanna do some kind of key combination. So I'll go here and just type in Control S. And what that will do when I'm in Notepad here typing away and I wanna save my document, I can hit the F1 key and now I can then save my document without having to hit Control S. I can just hit F1 to make that happen. So very basic stuff. Uh, on the gaming keyboards, you can actually set out strings of text and macros that fire off with different conditions and different timings and everything. Uh, this is really basic stuff here. And surprising, you don't get uh, some of the same software functionality you have in their other keyboards, which are essentially the same hardware, but uh, in different casings with some backlights and whatnot. But overall, it's a nice keyboard though. It really types quite nicely. It's very minimalist in its design, uh, very 
well built. So the uh, top portion here is metal, the bottom portion is plastic. So you get sturdiness, but it's not all that heavy. Some of the gaming keyboards can be uh, pretty heavy, actually. This one uh, is it's not too hard to move around on your desk, yet is sturdy enough that it doesn't uh, bow under the pressure of your typing. So it really does feel like a pretty solidly put together device. It's also very easy to pull these keys off, too, if you want to clean out the mechanism. So they just pop right off. Uh, you can pop them back on fairly easily and get back to work, usually, except when I'm live on air here. Uh, and you can go back to typing again without any problems there. It's so very easy to remo remove these and uh, get some things cleaned and get back to work. And overall, a pretty nice keyboard if you are a typing geek and want a mechanical keyboard that doesn't look like a command center for uh, the Battlestar Galactica or something. Really nice design here and something I can recommend. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.